In this video I'm going to show you how to clean and disassemble a motorcycle carburetor. Uh, most motorcycle carburetors are slide type carburetors and there's two types of slide carburetors. There's the mechanical and there's what they call um, CV carburetor which means constant velocity. This carburetor here is a, is a, a, is a, a mechanical slide carburetor and um, what that means is, is this slide fits inside the uh, carburetor like so. Um, this spring fits on and then there's a cap and this this slide is connected to my throttle cable and when I give it gas and pull on that uh, that throttle cable it lifts up this slide and what that does is it changes the inside the size of the inside of this carburetor um, and that uh, allows when this gets larger it allows more gas to be pulled out of the carburetor into the engine um, they call this a variable venturi uh, type carburetor because that uh, size can always change um, depending on where you where your throttle set. Uh, when you're when you take these slides out, uh, you want to make sure that the the jet needle is straight. It's it's tapered, but you don't want to make you want to make sure it's not bent and it fits inside the um, the needle jet um, without uh, you know you don't want it to be bent. Um, the other type carburetor is a uh, is a constant velocity carburetor, and it's uh, the only difference is that instead of the cable pu directly pulling up on this um, slide, uh, vacuum from the engine pulls it up. On those carburetors, there's usually a butterfly here that's connected to your throttle cable. When you give it gas, the butterfly opens up, and um, vacuum from the engine um, causes this slide to raise. There's a uh, on top of this con and connected to the slide is a rubber diaphragm, which uh, is connected to the slide. And when when the vacuum changes, it pulls up on the slide and and causes it to raise up. You clean them both the same way. Um, of course, with a constant velocity, you want to be careful and, and with the diaphragm and not not tear it or um, get any cleaning solution on it. Um, there's there's a number of ways to clean these carburetors. You can you can use a chemical dunk. You can disassemble the carb and just dunk everything in the as chemical dunk dunk dunk, or you can use a, um, probably the cheapest and most common way is um, just to buy a can of carb cleaner and, and uh, spray the parts and try and clean them that way. Um, when you when you're using either one of those methods, you want to be very careful of rubber rubber pieces like this O-ring. You don't want to get that chemical solution on the, on the, any rubber pieces, plastic pieces, because uh, it can ruin them. Um, the method I'm going to use to uh, to clean this carburetor is I'm going to put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, it's just water with some. Uh, I'm using some. Uh, oh, I forgot what the name of it is, but it's a cleaning solution. And uh, it's basically just ultrasonic waves that will clean the, any gunk that's inside the inside of this carburetor. And the advantage to using that is one, you don't have to deal with any of the toxic chemicals, and two, um, you don't have to worry about any plastic or rubber pieces um, being ruined by the uh, by the strong chemicals. The first step in disassembling these carburetors is when it's on the bike, um, this 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 valve, this slide is going to be attached to the carburetor like so. And there's going to be a spring here, and there's going to be a cap, and you got to have a cable running to the uh, running to the slide. You can just remove the cap and pull pull everything out and uh, leave it connected to the bike. Then take your carburetor. If you got a gasket on it, remove it. I want to get that out of the way. Um, on this on this carburetor, I've got the uh, got this uh, this choke shaft, this plastic choke shaft, which operates the choke here. I want to remove that. And then uh, set that aside. I like to set these on a, a shop, shop towel. Just arrange everything so you remember how to put it back together. Um, these vent tubes, you want to take these off. You want to make sure they're not obstructed or bent too far or filled with dirt because it's real important that the vents on the carburetor be exposed to atmospheric pressure for it to work correctly. So just blow these out and make sure they're clean. Um, same thing goes with these drain hoses. Just make sure it's not obstructed. Um, then I got my idle screw here. Uh, you can remove that. You're going to have to reset your idle unless you can remember um, where this was at. Usually carburetors uh, go bad because they've been sitting for so long with old gas and they get plugged up. Um, uh, if that's the case, uh, after you unplug and clean the carburetor, your old settings like this, where, wherever this idle speed, idle speed screw was set, uh, 
should be correct for the bike. So if you if you want, you can you can uh, record where that was at before you take it out and um, and then reset it. Uh, next thing I want to take out is my idle mixture screw. Um, I should probably mention these idle mixture screws can control either the gas flow or the air flow for the um, for the idle circuit in the carburetor. Uh, and you can usually tell depending on where they're at. Um, if they're between the slide and the air filter, uh, the, it could be like right here on the carburetor somewhere. They usually control the air that enters into that uh, idle, idle circuit. If they're between the slide and the intake manifold, like this one is, they usually control the fuel that uh, the fuel part of that idle circuit. And it's real important to know that because, um, for instance, if I turn this in, since this is between the slide and the uh, intake manifold, this would be controlling the, uh, the fuel in the idle circuit. So when I turn this in, I'm actually restricting the fuel more, so I would actually be leaning out the mixture. But if this, this uh, idle mixture screw was between the slide and the air filter somewhere over here, if I turned it in, I'd actually be restricting the air flow through the, the idle circuit. And that would um, actually make the, the mixture more rich. Um, uh, since, since, since this carburetor is probably not working because you know it's been sitting for so long with bad gas and it's plugged up, um, once I get this unplugged, this, this, wherever this mixture is, this screw is set is probably right for the bike. So I want to record, figure out where it was at and record it and then just reset it when I reassemble the carb. Um, if you don't know, uh, I think for this, this, this carburetor it's, it's, a, it's one and three quarter turn to get the bike started and then you can, you can adjust it. Um, but here, I'm going to turn it all the way in until it stops and record how, how many times it turns. It's half, one, one half, two. It's about two turns out, so I'll know where to set this when I reassemble it. It's just a spring, and you want to make sure these aren't bent either right here. And now I'm ready to disassemble the float bowl. I'm going to disassemble the float bowl. Um, this carburetor has three three screws on the bottom here that hold the float on float bowl on. Set the screws aside. Um, usually the float balls are kind of stuck to the carburetor and I usually take the end of the screwdriver and just lightly tap it until I feel it kind of break loose like that. You can see it's all gunked up. Um, here's my gasket. Uh, it's always better if you replace these gasket if you have a carb kit. If you don't have a kit um, you could probably get away with reusing it, just don't tear it. And, uh, and like I said, if you're going to dunk this or use car cleaner, you want to remove this, get this gasket out. Or, But, you know, I'm not going to touch it because I'm going to be using that, that ultrasonic cleaner and I don't want to tear this gasket. So I'm going to leave it in place and just set the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner like this. Um, here's my float, my floats. Um, First thing I want to do is take these floats off. It's usually a pin, like right here. Let's see. The bike is uh, so corroded. Uh, my handy pick. Just uh, you want to just get this this out. Then you can remove. Remove the float with the, uh, the float needle. Um, you want to check check the end of this needle here. Um, make sure it's not ridged, still smooth and cone shaped. Um, there's a um, uh, it's called a valve pin at the end of this uh, float needle. Actually, this doesn't have one. Hold on. Yeah, some of these carburetors have a valve pin at the end that uh, it's spring loaded and it presses in. Also, this this the tip of this this 
this uh, this float needle is uh, rubber, so you, you don't want to get carb cleaner on this. And then move, take my float. Um, some of these floats, uh, you want to kind of wiggle them, make sure there's no gasoline inside of them. That means they're leaking. Um, check them just to make sure there's no cracks and they're still in good good shape. Uh, this is my float inlet. Um, this is where my my fuel comes in. Uh, this is my in, in this is my inlet fuel inlet for the carburetor. Um, I'm just going to take some air and blow through this, and it should come out on this end. Uh, so I don't need to disassemble anything. Um, this is my main jet, and I'm going to take that out. Um, you want to be real real careful with these uh, jets. I think they're um, some made of brass, so. Okay, this is my uh, this is my main jet, and this is my um, needle jet right here. Um, my slide, this uh, this uh, jet needle right here, fits inside this when it's assembled like this. And you see how it's tapered. So when the slide goes in, um, it lets less fuel out, and when it moves out, more fuel can can come out of this um, um, this needle jet. Um, the needle jet and the jet needle are mainly responsible for the intermediate um, uh, inter intermediate range en engine speed. The main jets for the upper end, and then the um, then you got your pilot uh, jet right here, which is responsible for the for the idle circuit. And they all overlap, so they're not entirely used in one specific range because they they kind of all overlap overlap, and they do that so that the, uh, the carburetor and engine functions more smoothly. So you want to take out your pilot. Pilot jet, and uh, got some holes here. You want to make sure the hole in the end of this. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It's plugged up. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take all this stuff, and I'm going to put it in my ultrasonic cleaner. And after I get done with that, I'll, I'll check the holes in all these jets and make sure that they're they're clean. But um, I think I'm ready to put this in the cleaner. If you're not using an ultrasonic cleaner, you can uh, say, say you're using a can of uh, carb cleaner. You can you can spray this carburetor, um, and then uh, you know kind of let it soak, and and then spray. You can take uh, a, a compressed compressed air is really important with cleaning these carburetors. Um, you can take compressed air and blow through. I just blow through every hole I see because. Um, I want to make sure that this carburetor is venting correctly and all these passages are clean. Um, like back here, I would I would blow pressed air here and here. Um, but it's real important to know how where you know how this carburetor is assembled and, and like a parts uh, diagram of this carburetor, so you know that when you when you blow compressed air, you're not going to be blowing something out of the carburetor. Um, for example, on, on Tecumseh float to float type carburetors, they put a little. Um, rubber seal down here where the, the needle, uh, float needle goes and uh, I've actually taken compressed air and blown through here and, and blew that seal out so then you're going to end up needing a um, uh, a rebuild kit for these but if you're, if you're using a can of uh, carb cleaner you can uh, you want to be careful with this rubber gasket right here but you can take these pieces like this main jet and um, needle jet and the pilot jet and uh, soak them and make sure that these passageways are clean and these these holes here are clean and holes here are clean and um, take compressed air blow it through here and just get these cleaned up and uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take all these pieces and uh, uh, put them in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner okay this is my uh, this is the ultrasonic cleaner I use I've got this heated up it's got a little heater in it I'm going to place my carburetor in here and I'm going to place my float bowl in here and um, I'm going to put my jets in here in this uh, this float this float needle in here um, everything else I think I'm going to leave out. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I'm going to let this run a couple of cycles and then um, take it out and, and show you what, what kind of job it did. 
Okay, I got the, the carburetor clean. Um, took me a couple of hours, but uh, it's, it's pretty clean as you can see if you compare it to the, compare it to the video earlier. Um, once you get this, once you get the carburetor taken out of the, the however, however you're cleaning it and rinse it off and, and you know get it clean, take your um, compressed air, blow through this uh, fuel inlet. So make sure it's clear, make sure it's blowing out of the inlet um, uh, part of the carburetor, this inlet tube. Um, your main jet uh, blow, blow in here. Your pilot uh, pilot jet hull want to blow in there. Um, in this carburetor, it's this pilot, uh, this this it's the idle circuit, the low speed circuit, or pilot or pilot jet, whatever you want to call it. It's connected to this um, idle uh, mixture screw channel. So usually when you blow air in here, you can feel it coming out here, which, which you can, and vice versa. Um, a couple of holes in the back of the carburetor. I'm going to blow through there. Um, there's a vent hole right in here. I'm going to make sure that's clear, which it is. Um, take your jets. Here's my main jet and my um, my uh, needle jet. All these holes in the needle jet, you want to make sure they're clear, which they are. If you hold this up to the light, you should be able to see through this tiny hole, which I can. Um, on the main jet, you can also feel the air coming out when you, when you blow through it. So this is this is clean and clear. Um, your pilot jet or low speed jet, uh, you want to make sure all these holes here are clean. Also, it's a little harder, but if you hold this jet up to the light, you can you can see you can see light through this little hole. Um, you can't always feel the air blowing through it because the hole's so small, but I can usually see it see the light in it. Which I can, and I can also feel the air. So this one's all clean, and I can see that the the holes are clear. Um, the uh, float needle. Um, earlier in the video, I wasn't sure if uh, this valve pin was a spring loaded because it was just gummed up and stuck. But after I cleaned the carburetor, it is, and that's working correctly now. So, and uh, the float needle looks good. Um, still cone shaped and smooth so I guess I'm ready to uh, assemble this carburetor you can also um, there's another hose here like a drain hose uh, tube you can blow through you can actually feel it coming out the bottom so you can blow through that alright once you get all the passageways blown out on this carburetor you can start to assemble everything um, First I'm going to install the uh, pilot jet back in its hole and screw it in and tighten it up. You don't have to tighten it too tight. And then the main jet and the uh, needle jet. Then I can reinstall my float. Uh, attach my uh, float needle and that's on. Um, I know this float is set correctly uh, but if you want to check your float height I think on this bike um, it should be 12.5 millimeters and you want to you want to get it so just the float just rest on this oops it fell out just rest on the float needle and then you measure the height of the float to the base of the carburetor right here and it should be I think 12.5 millimeters on this carburetor but that's set um, let's see I think we're ready to put the float bolt back on Reinstall your screws.
reinstall the idle mixture screw and I remember um, when I disassembled it it was all the way in you don't need to, to tighten it down tight just when it starts stops to uh, turn and then I can set it, I think this was set at two turns out it's one two uh, reinstall the um, idle speed screw right there reinstall the choke Install my intake gasket. Uh, my vent hose. And this drain hose. And then I'm ready to reinstall the slide back onto my cable. And then I can, I can mount my carburetor. And I'm done. Um, just to recap, uh, if, you if, if you decide to clean the carburetor with any chemical cleaners, um, even cleaners from a can or a chemical cleaner in a dunk tank, uh, just make sure that you remove all the plastic pieces. Um, the best thing to do is if, if you have a parts uh, diagram for your carburetor, you can see where, where everything is located. So you can make sure you get all the rubber, rubber pieces out before you... Um, uh, use any chemical cleaner or you can just be real careful and not uh, not dunk the whole body of the carburetor just pull the jets out and make sure they're clean and and maybe that will be enough to to get your get your carb working again but um, if you have any questions uh, leave a leave a question in the comment section and I'll, I'll do my best to answer it and uh, thank you for watching